Namaskar and a very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are excited, we are delighted and ignited to be warmly welcoming you all, our esteemed guests, our delegates and speakers who have joined us live today. Thank you very, very much. Well, we are here to witness the launch of DLCI's latest report that's created in partnership with MasterCard and titled as Contactless Payments, Making It Safe, Secure and Easy for a Billion Indians. I am your Master of Ceremonies. My name is Shikha Singh and contactless digital payments, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, have really emerged as a credible, convenient and an innovative payment option for quite some time now, right? The COVID-19 pandemic, if we talk about, led to, may I say, some rising concerns of infection and formities role in the spread of the virus, which further fast-tracked the adoption of contactless payments, so as to say. And yes, the Data Security Council of India in partnership with MasterCard has in fact, earnestly endeavored to capture the essence of the Indian contactless payment ecosystem in the form of major trends, the key drivers, and also the landscape challenge. Well, the report contactless payments, making it safe, secure, and easy for a billion Indians out there, also covers the different facets of the contactless Part, uh, the payment ecosystem, such as standards, the architecture, the technologies, and also the government policies. Well, this report aims to illustrate how contactless payments can be made safe and also frictionless for a billion Indians. Well, ladies and gentlemen, on the other side of the screen, we would love to hear your views as well on the growing contactless payment ecosystem. So, Here's a humble urge and urging all of you to please engage with us and share your experiences on social media. And please do tag us at DSCI underscore connect on Twitter as well. We would love to hear your views. And additionally, please use the question feature that's on the right side of your window to ask questions during the panel session. And having said that, I once again warmly welcome you all to the report launch. And I hope it turns out to be a lovely and a great experience for all of you there. With that, let's begin the proceedings of the day. And here we are, extremely happy and elated to begin the inaugural report launch of the contactless payments, making it safe, secure, and easy for a billion agents by inviting Ms. Rama Vedashree, the CEO DSCI, for the inaugural address. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Shikha. A warm welcome to everyone who's joining us in the launch of this contactless payments report that DSCI has studied and developed in partnership with the MasterCard India team. And first of all, thanks to Lieutenant General Dr. Rajesh Khan for giving his time and joining us to unveil the report and of course have a special address in urging why we need to move towards contactless payments, priorities of government, and also what is it that we need to do to reassure the security and privacy concerns if we have to keep the momentum of the contact experience. Uh, India currently has really become a unique playbook for the world where both government and industry are actually coming together to drive an inclusion agenda, which is both the, uh, and really an inclusion agenda at unprecedented scale, both in terms of digital and financial inclusion. Uh, we are also witnessing a unique way in which India is offering to the world uh, a platform where it is a government envisioned open interoperable architecture platform to drive financial inclusion and digital payments and to drive this entire uh, model of a cash less cash economy. And it's also giving an opportunity while it's a government envisioned uh, platform led story, we are also seeing it's giving an opportunity from at one spectrum, micro entrepreneurs and very young innovators and fintechs to the very mega banks, the large public sector and private banks in India and the global payment system providers and the global big tech, which are now foraying into digital payments to drive this digital momentum and agenda of the country. 
So we are really seeing a government envisioned program where the industry is rallying behind it to be able to realize the financial inclusion and digital payment goals of the country. We've been into this digital payments theme for the last few years, particularly addressing the security challenges and end user awareness. In collaboration with METI, we have actually done a very large industry-led digital payments to Raksha Abhiyan campaign, where we got several ecosystem players from the payment industry and the banks and others and government also to be able to build that awareness among users and merchants and micro entrepreneurs so that they, they are reassured about the safety and security of digital transactions. Uh, a year back, we also uh, uh, went much deeper into the frauds and risk, min uh, risk min, uh, management and mitigation in digital payments. Now we are coming to this uh, third big uh, program that we are doing around studying more deeper on the contactless payments ecosystem, the technology drivers, and of course, what is it that the regulator and the industry need to come force together so that it actually becomes a big momentum in the country. When we look at uh, India currently now at the beginning of a new decade, digital payments and also contactless post-pandemic has really become ubiquitous. We do see a lot of uh, you know small vendors, even street side carts, actually going the contactless way thanks to UPI, QR code, and also you know this entire IMPS that has got enabled in the last few years. Uh, it is noted from several research reports that in financial year 2021, digital payments in India will reach almost about, uh, it is currently, I'm told, it has reached a total of over 53 billion Indian rupees in terms of value. It's just the digital payments part of it. And it, it uh, marks a big increase from almost 20.7 billion Indian rupees in 2018. Uh, uh, while this is happening on the digital payment side, we, it is projected that the global contactless payment market is expected to grow to almost USD 10 billion in 2020 from, uh, from tw in, uh, uh, 10 billion in 2020 to 18 billion in 2025, almost at a CAGR of 17%. And the NP, if you scan any of the RBI data, NPCR data, all of them are projecting really huge digital payment transactions, both in terms of volumes in the, and in the value of the uh, uh, value of the actual amounts. Uh, similarly, there was a recent digital payments uh, report from one of the industry players in India, which is talking about uh, almost a 76% growth rate in the last 12, uh, 12 months time frame. I think post-pandemic, the momentum has really grown. Now, we have also seen regulators trying to make forays into creating the enabling infrastructure. And if you all of us recall, RBI talked about a 500 crore uh, allocation for a payments infrastructure development fund to actually enable deployment of POS infrastructure in tier 3 and tier 6 cities. So we are seeing it's not only government and industry, but regulators actually play a uh, very proactive role. They are also mandated that uh, industry should move to an interoperable QR course by 2022. And in our report, we are talking a lot about interoperability, open standards, and specification. I'll come to that in, in a little while. So if it is having this kind of a momentum, what is the rationale for a new contactless payment report? And have all of you in this webinar and take Dr. Pan's time. It should move on its own agenda. We don't really need this research report. But unfortunately, the country is faced with a certain conundrum. The current conundrum is there is government, there is industry, uh, across technology industry plus financial services industry players and users and merchants all want to go through this digital payments and also contact each payment. But still, there are a lot of inherent dilemmas in driving this momentum. And there are a lot of misperceptions, I would say, and also some age-old preferences. I want to illustrate this with a small personal story, um, which will really illustrate what is this dilemma. Uh, I, I tend to run in the morning. And often in the summer when your water bottle is over, you know, you look for a small merchant which is selling you a small water bottle like this or maybe coconut water. And you see, you don't carry cash when you're running in the morning. You, uh, mostly you carry your phone. So even a small merchant who's selling a water bottle for 15, 20 rupees or a coconut uh, water cart, which is selling it for 50, 60 rupees, is all uh, QR code enabled. 
In contrast, on Monday evening, I was in one of the most luxury hotels, coffee shop in Aero City, my first business meeting after a year, year and a half, where some officers from a large bank came down from Bombay and wanted to meet me. I was surprised that while I gave my card, which was enabled for tap and go, right? It is a card which got came to me, which got refreshed three or four months back. That hotel coffee shop did not have a POS infrastructure which supports. So you had to swipe in and enter the train. This is the dilemma of the country where on the street side we are seeing QR code enabled, UPI payments, almost everybody is there. But you are seeing even some large establishments, one of the biggest hotel chains in the country did not have that. While my card at the end user level was enabled for that. So this is just a small personal story on what we need to do collectively as industry plus government to be able to drive. And it's not a story I made up, it is a real story. Almost every other day I pay for a coconut water on the road side when I'm running using this. But I could not do that in one of the largest coffee shops in the Aero City, uh, bang in the middle of a day. Particularly post-pandemic, we have seen uh, several mass transport systems across the world go in a big way in contactless. And uh, recently when the Land Transport Authority in Singapore enabled this, I'm told it's a very small city but compared to any big city in India. I'm told that within 10 days, more than 1 million uh, you know, contactless transactions happened. But the important thing is it is not just the user readiness and the willingness. The Land Transport Authority also took the step to enable 30,000 plus contactless payment acceptance devices. So we need to have this both work in tandem. Otherwise, I think we cannot really realize the vision of what we are saying in terms of rising the momentum of contactless payments. So what is this report delving into? We developed it in partnership with the MasterCard team. Several subject matter experts from industry were also consulted. And there was also a team from FTI Consulting who collaborated with us. It is, drive, it is delving into the technology evolutions and technology developments which is enabling contactless payments, the ecosystems, uh, the, of providers starting from fintechs to big banks to global payment providers and of course the regulators playing an enabling role. It's also looking at emerging security and privacy concerns, uh, particularly because when you look at contactless payments, there's a lot of uh, authentication and authorization probably also with biometrics, right? So that was also being looked at. And we are also looking at what is the security awareness campaign because there is a lot of misperception that contactless payment can is more uh, prone to frauds or uh, you know security vulnerabilities so we're trying to address those misperceptions in, when we have done that we are putting a lot of highlight on the need for open uh, standards and specifications many of the industry standards provider whether it's pci dss uh, you know, fito all of them have come up with it pci dss way back three years back in 2019 came up with this the standards for uh, you know, contactless payment standards on you know, using COTS uh, devices, all of that. So we have covered that. Most importantly, we are saying that the modern cryptography has a role to play, particularly because when you look at the contactless payments device or apps ecosystem, it's all miniaturized or small form factors. How do you look at lightweight cryptography solutions? In fact, the National Center of Excellence of um, DSCI looked at uh, a way in which we did a lightweight cipher challenge. Some and many researchers contributed to that. Some of those innovation and research will contribute because I think modern cryptography also has a big role to play, particularly lightweight cipher. So this is what the report is. It will be unveiled and we do urge everybody in the fintech space, developers and solution architects who are designing solutions for contactless payments to download the report and do share your insights. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Rama, for your topical perspectives. Of course, an overview with a storytelling approach as well. So such a positive vibe around digital payments and how really the industry and the government is mustering together. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, allow us just in a bit to usher in our keynote speaker for the day. We will be right back on the screen.
All right, so moving next to render the keynote address and also the report brief. Please join me in welcoming up on the virtual stage, Mr. Ravi Arora, the Senior Vice President and Executive Director, Global Policy Affairs and Community Relations, MasterCard. Mr. Ravi, it's over to you. Thank you very much, Shikha, uh, and uh, Rama, thank you so much. Uh, on behalf of MasterCard, a very warm welcome to all of you at the launch of this special uh, report. A lot's been said uh, so much about uh, about the report and the contents, and I think it's very, very exciting. And at the outset, uh, my sincere gratitude to Lieutenant General Dr. Rajesh Pan for joining us, sir, uh, uh, you know, and taking the time today and uh, helping uh, launch this uh, important report on contactless payment. Uh, you know, working with uh, Rama with you and the team at uh, Data Security Council of India, uh, I think it's been a great partnership uh, because uh, in bringing this report together, because as you mentioned, uh, this report looks at so many different dimensions, you know, on the contactless payment uh, ecosystem, uh, uh, on the uh, payment uh, ecosystem, and the different, uh, you know, technologies, the players, the uh, innovation uh, that is happening uh, in the uh, in the ecosystem, uh, the transition that the country uh, is going through, and the standards that are uh, evolving. And uh, the bottom line is it all boils down also to consumer trust, trust driven by safety and security. Uh, no matter the medium of uh, you know payment and contactless payment certainly uh, you know uh, require that level of consumer trust and we'll talk a little more about that so there's a lot of observation um, and uh, consultation that have gone into this report but uh, as i go and uh, shed a little more light on the report uh, shortly uh, let me share some highlights with you of a global study that was conducted by MasterCard uh, in uh, 2020 on the use of uh, contactless payment. And uh, based on the respondents that uh, the study reached out to globally, 46%, uh, that's nearly about half of the respondents, mentioned that they have swapped out their top of wallet card um, with one that offers contactless. Right? And that number actually jumped to 52% uh, for those who are 35 years and uh, younger, right? uh, in terms of swapping out their top of wallet card for uh, a, a contactless product. Now, India is certainly one of the youngest countries in the world. We know the demographics of India. Uh, 52 to 54% of our population is uh, below the age of 25. So I think it only... Um, you know, gives that, uh, uh, what's the runway ahead, one can imagine, uh, as such uh, innovative uh, methods of payment, you know, take on and uh, uh, carry forward uh, in the country. Now, majority, 82% of the respondents in that particular survey said that they viewed contactless as a cleaner way to pay, uh, you know, because clearly also it is up to 10 times faster uh, than other in-person, uh, you know, payment uh, methods out there, and uh, remove a lot of friction, you know, both for the uh, consumer as well as uh, for the merchant, right? Uh, uh, because uh, of the, how fast it is. Right? So clearly, and uh, seventy-four percent of those folks in the survey mentioned that uh, they will continue to use contactless uh, even in the post-pandemic era. Now, uh, now, India obviously has, uh, uh, we are witnessing and uh, have been over the past few years, uh, a very swift transition in Rama, as you mentioned, uh, the increase in contactless and digital payment. Uh, it has gone up about 15x just in the last 18 to 20 months alone mm -hmm. in the country. Mm -hmm. Today, there are 50 million contactless cards uh, in India. And... Uh, while the effort is on underway uh, to increase the acceptance of contactless, uh, give you another uh, dimension of uh, statistic where 25% of face-to-face -face credit card transactions 
and 6% of debit card transactions. So in total, I'm going to say about 12 to 15% of all card transactions are happening today through contactless means. Right? So, so that shows that how uh, that uh, rate is growing because a few years uh, ago, uh, maybe a year or two, it was only 4%. So, you know, so there's been a tremendous increase in the adoption of contactless. But clearly, uh, it comes down to something that you pointed out, Rama, is that uh, it is about uh, you know, access, uh, acceptance, and usage. And how do we make that link and drive both access, acceptance, and usage uh, to drive the adoption in the country. And the pandemic has certainly been an inflection point for contactless payments because more people are shifting from, uh, uh, you know, uh, to online from offline. And why? Because uh, contactless is very intuitive, uh, easy to use versus cash, works instantly, it's safe, you know, and secure. You just tap your card to pay, there's a beep, and you're done, right? And or you tap your phone, like you mentioned, and, you're, and the, uh, where your card is actually tokenized, you don't need to carry a piece of plastic uh, with you uh, today, right? So that uh, goes back to reducing, you know, that element of friction uh, that I mentioned about uh, both from the merchant as well as for the card holder side. Now, behind all of this, of course, is the importance of standards, the standards, safety, and security. And I think this is where the payment networks, uh, the financial institutions, uh, other ecosystem players are all coming together to ensure that uh, there needs to be, uh, you know, all, all aspects that go towards maintaining, you know, that interoperability. Uh, you know, there are instances where we do need to go further then there are, and interoperability uh, will help the ecosystem. And I think that, but this is where uh, all the players uh, in the ecosystem uh, are playing a big role in driving that element of trust and safety by, you know, coming together. And I think that as uh, different uh, channels, you know, we're looking at a significant adoption in uh, contactless. Uh, India, we're talking about smart cities. Uh, you know, looking at the hyper, hyper local e-commerce uh, environment, all of those are only going to provide that further impetus into the adoption uh, of uh, uh, contactless uh, you know, payments. So from a regulatory standpoint, uh, you know, it's very easy because uh, uh, the contactless transactions below uh, rupees 2000 uh, does not require a pin and the Reserve Bank of India uh, the RBI also increased the limit for contactless transaction uh, to 5,000 rupees from 2,000, uh, effective from January of this year. So allowing such innovation and cutting-edge new technology under a light-touch regulatory system will all go towards enabling that sustainable growth uh, in, in this particular ecosystem. And now the RBI very recently uh, a lot of our viewers would be aware, uh, those who have joined us, they very recently allowed uh, card and file tokenization as well, uh, which is a tremendous benefit uh, to the digital commerce uh, ecosystem uh, because it relieves the cardholders of the administrative burden of manually updating each merchant where their card is stored, right, uh, on file, because that makes it secure uh, from any kind of leaks because here you have a token, and there is no real card number or card data, you know, exchange uh, that is happening, and it reduces the risk um, and it mitigates the impact of malware, phishing attacks, you know, and data breach, you know, significantly. So this uh, uh, new, uh, you know, action by the RBI is a very welcome uh, action as well. So therefore, speaking of trust, uh, and uh, you know, India, I think, has been ahead of the world in the mandatory use of EMV and second factor authentication, uh, whereby it render, you know, any kind of these compromised uh, uh, or leaked data, uh, very, uh, you know, useless for uh, the fraudster. So overall, uh, this uh, contactless uh, report uh, that we are talking about, uh, it goes into the insights it's, uh, and ideas about shaping uh, India's uh, vast, uh, uh, ecosystem, 
uh, looks at standard, you know, what standards are powering or should power uh, the growth of uh, contactless in the country, uh, and how can standards and technology uh, help India create that safe and secure uh, ecosystem? Uh, it looks at trends, you know, and how do we scale uh, digital payment? Uh, looking at what are the present day challenges and how do we address them? Look, talk about different solutions. Ramal, you mentioned about you know QR. We're talking about Bharat QR code. There's NFC, NFC communication, RFID. You know all of those. Uh, what goes towards uh, you know in uh, biometrics, etc. In authentication uh, and identification, or in uh, ensuring uh, a very seamless experience. You know for uh, user. Talk looked about fraud. What are the different myths out there and misconception when it comes related to uh, contactless uh, payment. Uh, we talked about interoperability as well earlier. And, uh, you know, and also more so uh, the uh, importance of uh, security awareness campaign. You know, because we are, we are a vast country with uh, multilingual uh, you know, across state. And I think contactless allows that in, in a way have a medium where makes it uh, very simple for users uh, across, uh, you know, in, in a multilingual you know, capacity as well. So uh, awareness, education, the importance of that, and above all, as you mentioned, what are the right policy intervention to accelerate the adoption of contactless is covered in the report. So at MasterCard, uh, we are committed towards furthering the Digital India vision of the uh, Honorable Prime Minister and our significant investment continue to power and expand India's uh, fintech capability, uh, power the startup uh, ecosystem uh, by developing uh, value-added uh, services such as uh, uh, fraud mitigation, uh, authentication, tokenization, cybersecurity, intelligence solution, and uh, very robust data analytics. So at MasterCard, we are really delighted to have had the opportunity to work with the uh, Data Security Council of India uh, and uh, working on this report because uh, DSPI continues to do uh, pioneering work in making uh, the digital systems um, in India uh, much safer. So once again, uh, we're very privileged to that Dr. Jan Pan has been uh, has joined us and uh, truly grateful sir, for your support. Um, and uh, in helping releasing this program so, with that, I turn it back uh, over to you for the next the program. We're back to you, Shikha. Thank you. Well, they say that out of adversity comes opportunity. Thank you very, very much, Mr. Arora, for your keynote address and also the report brief. Well, as you said, access, acceptance, and usage gets a new thrust with respect to contactless payments. And as you made it clear with your address, thank you very, very much. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's have good vibes because the highlight of our electronic and August gathering is just going to be underway. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. All right, so they say good things happen when we work as individuals, but the greatest of things have happened when we actually come together. Ladies and gentlemen, in your much lovely presence, it's time to unveil the much awaited report. Well, to do the honors, please join me in welcoming once again, Mr. Ravi Arora, the Senior Vice President and Executive Director, Global Policy Affairs and Community Relations, MasterCard. We'll also be joined by our very own Ms. Rama Vedashree, CEO, DSAI. And let's put our hands together in also welcoming, warmly welcoming our esteemed chief guest for this momentous occasion, Lieutenant General Dr. Rajesh Pant, the National Cyber Security Coordinator, Government of India. And with that, let's initiate the unveiling ceremony. <laughs>
All right, so some happy tweets already flowing in. Such a lovely occasion to mark the celebration. A hearty thank you to all our distinguished guests right there up onto the virtual stage. Lieutenant General Dr. Pan, thank you very much. Along with you, Mr. Arora and Ms. Vedashri, thank you for joining us and unveiling the much awaited uh, launch of the report, Contactless Payments, making it safe, secure, and easy for a billion Indians. What a landmark moment indeed let's have some good round of cheer as if done the unveiling thank you very very much and uh, with that we will just quickly request our delegates to please very much download the copy right out there i'm sure of the newly launched report through scanning the qr code appearing right there on the screens for receiving the report copy and as you do this uh, allow me to share with you all that an integral element of the ceremony is also coming up the chief guest address is right there we'll be right back on the screens All right, so thank you firstly for the uh, tweets that are coming in. I'm, yes, getting positively distracted with those, so thank you. And uh, of course, uh, I hope you've downloaded your copy there as well. And uh, with that, allow us to please move forward with pride, with privilege, and with excitement, of course, because it's time now that we will be inviting our esteemed chief guest for the launch right there for his address. Lieutenant General Dr. Rajesh Pant would be joining us. And if I talk about our chief guest, Lieutenant General Dr. Pant, ladies and gentlemen, is an internationally renowned techno scholar, warrior, mentor, an officer who served in the Indian Army Signals for 41 years. And he is unstoppable with an unblemished service profile. Well, wherein he was absolutely awarded three times by the President of India for distinguished service of the highest order. Well, he is currently tenanting the prestigious appointment of the National Cybersecurity Coordinator of India, as we know, under the Prime Minister's office. Well, may I please request Lieutenant General Dr. Rajesh Pant to please come forward on the virtual stage and grace the occasion with his address. Over to you, sir. Thank you, uh, Shikha, and uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, let me first compliment Mr. Ravi Arora and Ms. Rama Vidashri, uh, that is MasterCard, as well as the Data Security Council of India, for uh, preparing a very timely and interesting uh, report that we have released on a very auspicious day. I must compliment them on selecting the day also, because today is the birthday of our Honorable Prime Minister, the 71st birthday. Uh, it is also a day where we call as Vishwa Karma Puja, in the sense that we worship uh, our uh, instruments and th those uh, aspects that we work with. And if you go to Google, it will tell you that it is also the World Patient Safety Day. So, uh, uh, I think it's a, a great event. We've heard some excellent talks from uh, Ms. Rama Vedashri and a personal example of what I see is a reverse digital divide that the five star hotel does not have the uh, wherewithal for you know this latest contactless cards, but the street hawker has it. And then uh, Ravi also brought us up to date with uh, the, the, the desire of the younger population, if I may say, to go in for the contactless payment, and that is. That, that, that is very understandable because you know the younger population uh, they want action they don't have patience and that is what we've been seeing so it's a natural fallout that they will go in for these sort of uh, cardless and contactless payments now the covid uh, the pandemic uh, did bring about a digital transformation and uh, uh, forced us to go online but it also created a new industry in the contactless or the no touch sort of a domain. Uh, in fact, many things came out of this uh, this whole pandemic and the way we faced it, like your 
PPE kits uh, started being manufactured in India and we had masks, we had these lotions coming out and also one of the things that is a natural fallout is the contactless card. And why I am saying it is because one of the most common threats that we had in the pandemic was this aspect of uh, you know touching uh, things from where the virus uh, could enter our uh, nose or mouth etc. And that is where going to the ATM uh, one had to be very careful because a large number of people uh, use the ATMs as also the point of sale machines and I remember going to petrol pumps and uh, being so careful about uh, you know, handling that device when he came for the payment. So, uh, in, in this sort of environment, I think this contactless card is a blessing in disguise. And most of us, if you see the daily payments that we make when we go for grocery or vegetables or fruits, whatever, the, the amount is not much. I mean, for the big payments, of course, you know, you think 10 times and uh, make it probably uh, online payment, etc. But for the daily payments, uh, which is less than, which are less than 5,000 rupees, I think, uh, you know, it's all fitting together. So, uh, I must compliment uh, MasterCard for this very timely action. You know, they used to call this the EMV chip and the EMV stood for Europe, MasterCard and Visa. So, they, they are one of the original uh, creators of this uh, technology also. Now, let me come back to, you know, some statistics at the national level. And those of you who recall the headline in the newspapers yesterday, that our uh, cyber crime has gone up by 11.8 percent, and uh, more than 50,000 cases were registered last year in our cybercrime.gov.in portal, and most of these cases pertain to cyber fraud. Now, this is where, at my level, it is a point of concern, and that also, when we analyzed it, it was mostly now coming from the tier two and three cities. And that is where the proliferation of uh, our 4G uh, mobile services is taking place. So people are quickly uh, turning over to using uh, the data services for payment, etc. And may not be very conscious of the security services. So a lot of uh, you know these security measures have to be applied. Uh, Ravi mentioned the importance of standards. And I think it is very, very important. And uh, just for information, when the Prime Minister goes to the US uh, uh, after a few days and uh, he's uh, addressing a special session on technology and uh, cyber uh, during the Quad uh, Summit, uh, he's the lead speaker in that. And that is where uh, a lot of these aspects and we are expecting a joint statement to come out where standards uh, should be figuring in as far as the Quad uh, nations are concerned. Now, uh, you know, the earlier cards, they had this sort of a magnetic strip, which I recall. And uh, there were a lot of cases of that uh, magnetic strip data being uh, taken away by skimming. Uh, and, you know, you had these devices which they used to put in the ATM machines also and get that data. So, uh, with these contactless cards, what I'm reading is that because of the encryption, etc., all that will go away. So, that, that is the first point of concern as to how the security is going to be maintained. But one thing I would like to, uh, you know, MasterCard to consider is that somewhere you have to combine this with uh, multi-factor authentication. Uh, because, and this I have been saying earlier also, if you recall, that uh, uh, there has to be a two-factor. Uh, otherwise, you know, the cyber criminals will find a way out and uh, take advantage of it. And again, if I come back to the tier two and three cities uh, where, uh, you know, we don't want that, that section of the population to suffer. So as technology progresses, try and see how you can uh, combine this with uh, facial recognition or whatever biometrics or, you know, some of these new technologies that are coming out. Um, India is very fortunate to have the Aadhaar system. You know, a lot of countries now are taking interest in our UIDA. Uh, the National Digital Identity System based on biometrics. Uh, the figure, what I recall uh, as of today is about 1.24 billion. That is the registered number of uh, people we have got on the Aadhaar system. So, uh, then that's a great asset we have uh, for uh, at least the multi-factor authentication. Uh, quickly, let me just summarize as to what are the advantages that we perceive uh, with this contactless payment. Firstly, the queues are going to get shorter. 
because in India everywhere you go, with the payment queues uh, you find people are just waiting to pay and Ravi said uh, it is 10 times faster. So that that's a great uh, advantage whether it is you know in the, uh, in the shopping malls or the ATM etc. And uh, uh, this is the uh, most significant advantage and of course handling cash uh, is not going to be uh, a concern at the checkout and you know no portion of the problems of change etc. And there will be no hassle of punching your pin. So there again, you know, the contact is required, etc. So all that will go away with, because of the near field communications and the RFID, etc. that you mentioned. Then these transactions are expected to be safer uh, because it is more reliable and secure than the other forms of uh, payment. And it protects us against any fraudulent purchases. So that's another advantage. Uh, then, uh, of course, flexibility of payment devices. We say goodbye to bulky wallets. And uh, that's all we need. And then uh, he also mentioned about the tokenization. So these days you find a lot of people wearing uh, smart watches, not me of course, but uh, if you have any of these other devices, then you can use them as tokens and have an additional uh, advantage. Uh, then of course, there are some aspects of uh, better operational efficiency, no extra cost. Uh, but the concerns for consumers are that uh, as uh, Rama also mentioned that as of today there is limited acceptance. So uh, retailers are slowly facilitating this uh, contactless payment, uh, but uh, this will require some time. Uh, the transaction limits as of today are considered low. This is the feedback I have got as to the present RBI ruling. There is a gap of uh, 5000. Uh, then there may be some technical uh, limitations uh, in this. Uh, with uh, you know, you may have, uh, you may not have an NFC compliant uh, smartphone. Then there is a limited international availability, uh, and there are some security concerns also. Now, this aspect of international availability is also what uh, uh, Ravi was talking about the interoperability. And just a few days back, I was in another seminar where we were discussing the uh, national digital identity, and one of the discussion points was that while within the nation. Uh, we can accept this, but how do we accept the uh, interoperability of our digital identity in international transactions? Because uh, uh, you know of the uh, local laws and sovereignty, etc. Uh, so that that is an issue that we will have to uh, address as time goes by. I'm sure RBI is going to come out with a policy on this at a national level. You are seeing a large number of policies coming out. The policy on AI has come out a few days back. Policy on drones came out. So all these issues uh, are being addressed by various ministries and I look forward to a, a policy which caters for all the aspects and the concerns uh, that we have been discussing. So uh, with that, let me once again uh, compliment uh, MasterCard and DSCI. Uh, let me also reinstate that this aspect of PPP is very important uh, for us in the government. Uh, you know, cyber security cannot be done by the government alone especially in the critical sector and finance is one of our critical sectors. Uh, most of the critical sector today is private. And there are these uh, state back uh, actors, uh, let me also share with you, that are now targeting uh, the critical sectors. So uh, we have to work together and ensure uh, that our national cyberspace uh, remains safe, secure, uh, resilient. So uh, with that, thank you very much for giving me this honor. Uh, it's a great day to uh, you know, as I already said, it's a very auspicious day, and I wish uh, that this is a successful venture. Uh, thank you very much. Jai Hind. Thank you for the acknowledgments uh, to DSCI and MasterCard, and thank you very, very much, Lieutenant General Dr. Rajesh Pant, for your chief guest address uh, that was uh, much awaited. And we lend our ears too, grateful to be addressed by you. And um, as you spoke to us, I'm sure the good stride continues as we timely launch the report, Contactless Payments. And as we gear up, ladies and gentlemen, for the final leg of the program this afternoon, we have an eclectic line of some of the finest speakers joining us for a power-packed panel discussion. Be right there on your screens. Be here like that.
and uh, staying true to our words, we are right back and it's time for a panel discussion that would, of course, focus on the theme, which is contactless payments, making it safe, secure and easy for a billion Indians. And, and it's so good to see the fervor that's raining in the form of tweets from the Twitterates. Don't forget to tag us also. We would be happy to reshare the post as well. And uh, yes, feel free to, you know, shoot in your questions also to our discussants who would be joining us right uh, there. And with that, let's warmly welcome uh, Mr. Dr. John K. Ram, the director, IDR BT. Let's also welcome Mr. Anil Bandar, the group CISO SBI. We also have with us joining in the panel, Mr. Rajiv Kumar, the Senior Vice President, Market Development, MasterCard. We are to moderate the session and also to set the context. And let's welcome, ladies and gentlemen, a good round of cheer, our moderator, Mr. Vinay Godse, the VP DSCI. And Mr. Godse, uh, handing over the strings of the conversation to you, if you are all set. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Shikha. Uh, can we get Mr. Anil as well on the stage? Mm -hmm. We we are not yet got Mr. Anil on the stage, but I think we can start our conversation. Um, about one is this report that we put together with the with the help of the Mastercard and <clears throat> also FTI Consulting. Uh, so what it really tries to look at is the entire ecosystem that had been evolved um, uh, to support the uh, uh, contactless payment uh, contactless payment transactions and more importantly the imperatives that we see. Uh, although most of the foundational technology was were, were available, they were there for for a long basically the. The key thing basically which has evolved in terms of NFC, in terms of uh, uh, QR code or uh, now due to that as well and uh, there are uh, cheap, uh, uh, NFC cheap and the way the evaluation has been, has been there and because of some of those devices which has come, especially mobile device which has come and which has integrated the NFC ecosystem very well basically. That has really proliferated the way the uh, transaction ecosystem around the uh, contactless would evolve basically. But real flip happened because of the pandemic last year, basically. The, the, the scare of the fomites basically had really pushed the, um, uh, this ecosystem quite significantly higher. And we had seen the significant number of the, uh, uh, number of the uh, transactions coming uh, on a uh, contactless, basically. So, so my, my conversation which we would try to do in this particular session let me start with uh, dr janaki raman basically so at the aggregate level you see the entire banking industry the way it has been evolving basically so how the industry has been adopting to the sudden uh, change of a consumer behavior at the same time uh, the the uh, technology ecosystem is also gradually building towards it So, probably you are on mute, sir. Sir, we are not able to hear you. Uh, am I audible now? Yeah, 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 it is now, yeah. Audible? Okay, yeah. Yeah. Sure, okay. Yeah, no. Uh, the most important thing uh, the pandemic has done is uh, it pushed people to safety concerns and that really resulted in people looking at technological solutions for the you know, payment beacon. This is really a tipping point. In the Indian you know, payment system, we should see this as a tipping point. You know? One of the key things that has happened is the UPI, which is drafted by the UPI. In my opinion, it is the most important technology that got used and opened up really an avenue for people to handle it. That way we started seeing the UPI transaction, number of digital transactions in the UPI taking phenomenal growth. For example, the last month is about 1.8 million transactions. It means that you know, we can imagine uh, the kind of uh, revolution that is happening in the payment space. And then uh, very soon, we will see that the 
thing that we see is that the number of transactions that are timing out because the numbers have increased and then every transaction is hitting the flow banking now we start seeing that there is a uh, no, there is a drop on this transaction and also the kind of other kinds of frauds that can come into this system i probably will come back to that and then you know we, we can probably no we look at that as part of a later conversation what kind of moving forward what kind of additional challenges we could foresee uh, when when this level of growth uh, exponential growth is happening on the digital payment infrastructure okay uh, so uh, with this i think a brief uh, overview remark basically so let me come to uh, mr anil bandari basically because you had you are the one who had been enabling many of this kind of transaction transition happen on a contactless payment ecosystem basically so uh, so i know volume has significantly risen so is the speed and so is the way we do it basically so Uh, there are so many players that probably are supporting this kind of ecosystem and enter the supply chain of transaction processing, especially because of the way things are going on with various different devices and different application has been really getting unbundled basically. So, as an CEO, so how help us understand how this transition that you enable and your experience with respect to uh, the volume and the complexity and the managing the entire ecosystem from the security perspective, how how you are seeing that in last one year stuff. so yeah good morning all uh, slightly i'm i'm slightly on a bad network i couldn't hear much of of what you said but uh, the last part i understand that you wanted about the security perspective and how you are handling it yeah. so like you know first of all that uh, it's a it's a kind of a very welcome thing this contactless payments coming in particularly in this covid times you know when we are people are afraid of uh, dipping the signatures uh, dipping the cards and putting their fingers fingers uh, fingerprints elsewhere the biometrics and other kind of stuff so this is a welcome payment so as as this uh, contactless payments evolve and they grow exponentially at this time you know there are certain kind of the security the risk i think which mr rajiv will speak about later but the myths which need to be dispelled uh, regarding that you know if somebody can put a reader next to your pocket and copy the card details and somebody when you lose that card and what happens to that and what happens that you know when two cards are placed simultaneously like uh, near a reader what happens that do i get debited twice or uh, you know all those kind of security security risk are there so i i believe that there is a lot of security awareness which needs to be created around this uh, there there are a lot of questions around which people also do ask me and this is these are the questions which i ask with rajiv what how do we handle this security risk and particularly one of those things which i would like to see is that you know uh 
at the current moment like we have a certain limit till such time you know you can use this contact lens payments but i what i would like to see is that you know when there are depending on the velocity and there are certain number of transactions happening within a defined period of time you know that then it should be followed by some kind of a second factor authentication to prevent you know where where you know uh, misuse of card with the card has been lost like say you know in a in a particular time if you see many of those kind of contact lens transactions happening so there, there there could be an afa built in you know which could which could prevent these kind of things happening. so at this moment with the kind of limit which we have uh, it's a very welcome step we don't see much of a security risk which is involving with the kind of uh, the limits which have been played, put in place but then again it's uh, it's a new developing area and uh, you know we, we at this moment we do not fully visualize we do not fully understand which other risk and we need to wait and watch and see how things pan out okay um i mean these are very important uh, i think areas to as a concern areas from security but we definitely deliberate on that uh, uh, mr anil so coming to rajiv right rajiv so so the let's try to think about the ecosystem basically the ecosystem that is really fueling and really uh, enabling this uh, transitioning uh, to the contactless uh, payment uh, 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 processing basically so how do you see this ecosystem is being adapting and probably um contributing to the scaling scaling to the unimaginable level that we are seeing in last two, one or two years right uh, thank you vinayak uh, good afternoon everyone um talking about uh, the ecosystem uh, uh, vinayak uh, i want to give uh, two data points with regard to contact us um one is uh, the number of cards out there which have got a contactless uh, reader or have got that wifi logo and the second one is uh, from the acceptance location point of view uh, these are the two data points i'll share uh, with regards to cards we currently have around 70 to 80 million contactless cards out there a majority of these cards are currently credit cards but thanks to covid the acceleration of uh, banks issuing both credit and debit has picked up because now they're seeing the cost benefit analysis earlier banks were looking at why do we spend that extra money to put that rfid flag on our debit cards because very few people were using these cards was the question mark but with covid what has happened is customers are using contactless big time and they are demanding it so because of that more and more banks are issuing debit cards also with a contactless flag Uh, we expect these numbers to grow significantly uh, in fact in the last one year most of the issuers in fact almost 100% of the credit card issuers are issuing cards with contactless flag and we see more and more debit card issuers also uh, within segments start issuing contactless enabled debit card so i expect this number of 70 to 80 million cards to grow significantly in the coming years coming to the acceptance locations we currently have 2.7 million acceptance locations or point of sale machines which are uh, contactless enabled and this number also is galloping because the acquiring banks and the payment facilitators who actually deploy these point of sale terminals are realizing the throughput on these uh, terminals which was uh, very limited before covid has started increasing with more and more contactless transactions happening in this point of sale terminals so i expect this number 2.7 million terminals to also grow significantly uh, to a stage where we expect a good 70 to 80% of all the point of sale terminals that are deployed out there would eventually be contactless enabled we'll have a, a few 20 to 30% of uh, the point of sale machines which will not be contactless enabled because of uh, the merchant not requiring it or not enough cards in that particular territory um, you know uh, requiring a contactless terminal so uh, uh, we believe in most of the tier 1 2 and 3 cities we'll have uh, mostly contactless enabled terminal so in short the story both on the issuing side as well on the acquiring side is very positive all thanks to covid yeah and dr janti raman i think the technology behind this right so um, and uh, right from the hardware side uh, innovation to what is happened in a uh, mobile especially the security element and 
postcard emulation ecosystem, that technology ecosystem that has been built into mobile, which could then interact with all of these uh, uh, Bluetooth enabled or uh, QR card enabled or uh, even uh, NFC, especially NFC uh, uh, relevant, basically. And then there are a lot of those uh, technology stack like a like a biometrics, like a like a machine learning and AI. Uh, uh, modern cryptography, which uh, initially in our earlier session, Kama talked about it. So, can you help us keep understand the technology which is enabling this kind of uh, uh, um, transactions, basically, which are increasingly becoming contactless? Sure. Um, yeah, uh, that's a great question, Vinayak. I think the technology part of it, in my opinion, has uh, several components. You know, one is where. Uh, uh, what Rajiv is pointing out, you know, basically take a card with this RFID and then uh, So this is where instead of typing the card, you actually now you can make it to the communication to communicate with the device. We are struggling to hear you, sir. I'm not sure why. So is that right? Yeah, and now it is okay. I don't know what's happening, but uh, let me see if uh, I can increase my voice and then uh, is that better now? Hi, it's going and coming actually. Uh, it's very unstable then, in terms of so Is the network connection is bad? I don't know. Uh, I think mic is a problem. The sound system is a problem. Is, is it with the sound system? Yeah, I mean, so mic probably is not properly at a distance to you. No, actually, I'm very near. I'm using the laptop. Now it is okay. Now it is okay. I don't know what's happening because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm using my laptop and there is no configurable parameter that I'm changing. Yes, sir. You continue, sir. Okay. Uh, so, one part is where you use the near field communication with the RFID to communicate with the device. And then, basically, I think all the MasterCard is talking about it and getting all the ecosystem players to become uh, contactless payment. That's one part of it. The other part is the UPI QR code, file code enabled technologies. Uh, that part of it is to get the Dr. Jangiram, uh, please allow me to interrupt just for a bit. We'll just request you. Uh, we'll, we'll try to help you with your audio settings right now backstage. So let the okay. discussions continue while we yeah, just okay. get into the main stage yeah. just in a bit. Okay. Thank you. Sure. So uh, we would continue, uh, Mr. Anil. Um, um, I think there are certainly some standards, right, which as you all and PCIDS is definitely has some standard. EMV Co is also you you all quite a good level of standards basically. And now, now the pure standards are also coming in basically. So in your design of a security for this contact layers, so how do you uh, see these standards and the kind of a support they provide in terms of devising the security for the contact layers ecosystem? Yeah, so that is something you know which is uh, which is extremely important, and the standards are in itself quite comprehensive. So wherever these uh, the card data and the, the the data related to the card is there, the PCI DSA standards and the uh, other applicable standard re relating to the wherever the card data is there. So those are extremely important, and in the bank, you know that is we when, wherever the card data is getting handled, we make sure that all the standards which are there, you know, those standards are getting followed without the, without exception so these are in addition to the standard which the bank bank uh, you know imposes on itself in terms of the how the data is stored and how the data is encrypted and how the data is uh, used the encrypted while in motion and while at rest and those those are kind of things so the, the bank has its own security controls and over on top of that this the pci dsa standards that uh, those are the mandatory standards which the bank has so those wherever the card data is used so it is imperative on the bank to use it and uh, the the standards are itself quite comprehensive in the sense and we make sure that you know even 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 not for the contactless uh, in the context of where the cards is getting used but even wherever the proxy data related to the card is getting used we ensure that the pcs pcid standards and the other the, the standards related to the usage of the pin and the pin blocks and those kind of things you know those are maintained in the bank so th those are extremely comprehensive and extremely useful standards for the bank yeah. 
So you are back. So can you can you yeah, yeah. continue yeah. on the technology discussion? Then? Yeah, yeah. Is that better now? No, this is better. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I think uh, yeah. This shows the technology has all the components of though we can stay. <laughs> And uh, rubber beats the road, and the spark comes in. Right? So we have all these issues with the technology. Uh, hopefully, my voice is much better. Yeah, little better, sir. Means it's still some problem, but uh, I think we we can continue. Oh gosh, that. okay. Anyway, yeah. so um, so one part which I'm saying is the near field to be the communication and RFID tag part, which uh, you know, Rajiv has. Uh, has Uh, the challenge there is if the near field communication is not good, the near field can be intercepted. But a lot of that is encrypted, so you you have some security associated with that near field communication. So hopefully, nothing should go wrong. The other part of the technology is using the mobile. <laughs> we still struggling, sir. <laughs> But I can understand what you are trying to say. Is a uh, so one is the NFC, another is the mobile. Uh, and yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I, I, see the mo- mobile part of it. Actually, you have deployed. I think I mean I, I try to um, uh, uh, see all the dimension that you tried to cover, but now I'll, I'll come to uh, Mr. Anil basically continue the discussion on security. So you talked about one of the important thing in your earlier remark on a need to introduce the second factor authentication basically. But entire uh, context is payment ecosystem talks about providing better experience basically, good experience, and it also talks about reducing the frictions in the ecosystem, and that's why probably. Uh, The, there was a lot of discussion about uh, the the limit two thousand rupees per transaction to increase to five thousand because then significant number of transactions can be covered in that and the cognitive burden on user uh, about the security because uh, second factor is definitely adding cognitive burden on user basically get reduced and you have you find other means basically to uh, to secure the transaction basically so so. How do you see this dilemma? Uh, and, and this dilemma has been really very important in terms of consideration by the RBI as well to increase in the limit to the five thousand uh, rupees. So one side friction less, one side user experience, one side the speed flexibility, and other side the concern the security and privacy. No, I exactly understand where you're coming from. A slight clarification: I did not say that AFA is required. I said that in certain circumstances where you see a velocity increasing, you know, that yeah. the number of transactions of say five thousand rupees are being done. 
over this one and then in those cases you know as a preventive check as a fraud control mechanism you need to add afa but what i was telling is that the bank is at the forefront of uh, this one despite of, uh, in addition to what the card uh, industry does and the contactless payments the bank also has its you know you would have heard about the uno cash transactions yeah you know yeah. there was there was a lot of atm skimming happening so what the bank has done is now that you know you come into my retail uh, internet banking website uh, use put your car, put your card number there and generate a ref number and with that ref number you go to my atm and without yeah. using your this one you know card you can just put the ref number and withdraw yeah. this yeah. this cash so bank is also enabling this contactless payments and this uno cash transaction which we have you know it has caught on and there are large number of uno cash transaction happening across the bank the bank also has come out we you would have seen the advertisements you know we, along with this type of watch we have come out the wearable uh, device you know there's a watch which you just have to and the, the the watch you place in front of that uh, reader and that amount can be debited so the bank is all for that but what i was uh, you know, what i was hinting it uh, at that you know uh, afa is when certain kind of as a front yeah. limit mechanism basically when yeah. certain, uh, there's a velocity increase in those kind of contactless payment across a different yeah. so may, may not be for, for each transaction but aggregate level you can see the number of transactions see the velocity and based on that you put some kind of a uh, control like that so okay exactly uh, but yeah. yeah yeah please yeah so but another important uh, discussion here for the security is the the transaction processing and the the way it is getting unbundled right so when you talk about contact payment ecosystem uh, dr janakri have just talked about the nfc he talks about the mobile phone then one is a device manufacturer other is uh, somebody who initiate the transaction now we this ecosystem is so open now somebody providing email service is now uh, uh, initiating the um, payment transactions basically right and there's so many th- third party vendors comes into the picture so many um, uh, fintechs comes into picture so they help you to initiate transaction they help you to even onboard the customer they help you to execute the transaction and even they help you to manage the data coming out of a transaction basically so in this particular transaction life cycle where so many it used to be we used to talk about the telecom unbundling where we had a lot of those kind of new players joining in because of unbundling telecom but now the transactions are also getting processing is also getting unbundling to get so many such kind of entity into picture of a transaction processing basically so that does does that's very you basically the device is being used the interface is being used the number of vendors and third parties coming into the picture no very much so in the banks when you when you uh, to the risk of the people process and the technologies but when you are dependent on third party vendors you know there's an additional element of risk which is something which is not in your control which you are adding to it so and basically what happens is that you know you may do all your due diligence like you know you may stipulate that certain things you know the vendors this you may fo- follow a secure configuration document or the controls which you place on the vendors environment but then again it is not possible to do a 24 by 7 monitoring of what is happening at the vendors end so there is a th- that is a kind of risk which uh, is brought into you know the the kind of a, a contagion risk which is brought into this when you are talking about a large number of third party integrating with the infrastructure and uh, to to for the state bank of india you now the vendor risk is kind of something which is extremely important we pay a lot of attention to this and we have uh, at the time of vendor onboarding right from the at the onboarding stage to when the infrastructures are getting integrated we have a very rigorous check on the which is happening and we have seen that even some of the larger vendors you know they fail to match up to the security controls which the bank has and which the the regulator wants us to impose on the third party also who's interacting with us so that is an extremely 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 valid point on the kind of risk which is being brought by the various interfaces and the third party vendors which are there associated getting associated in this unbundling of the processes like you said yeah and and i think uh, in all of these thing uh, and with the paradigms are significantly changing and one of the paradigm that we had with respect to the frauds coming in a uh, uh, credit card transaction processing and this question i would like to ask to raj you um, so because emv uh, uh, standards have been evolving and this uh, uh, this standards has come to the level that key for reducing the transaction frauds basically we need to have chip and pin uh base kind of ecosystem for each of the tra- each of the card basically and and that has curbed down uh, the frauds in transaction uh, post card transaction quite significantly 
but now we are into the paradigm of a contactless payment ecosystem so from the mastercard perspective you must be seeing across the globe how the transactions are happening so do you see the difference between uh, the fraud that used to happen then the paradigm of a uh, contact based kind of a credit card transaction and now we are into contactless transactions so do you see the changes do you see the uh difference between the way the frauds are happening there and now the frauds are happening so what is overall understanding about the number of frauds and number of frauds happening now uh thanks unak very important question uh, i'll try to uh, explain as to what uh, actually happens with regard to fraud um when uh, years ago we used to have the max stripe cards that's when fraud was at the highest because cloning was very easy and uh, all fraudsters usually get attracted to any market which has got a max stripe based ecosystem because cloning and uh, defrauding is very easy moment a chip and pin is introduced at a market level what we have seen globally is fraud moves a bit because cloning a emv chip co card and the pin and duplicating it and frauding gets that much harder so invariably fraud moves from a uh, a chip and pin market moment it is introduced and it is uh, wide where majority of the card holders are chip and pin card holders so in our market for instance in india moment uh, uh, emv co chip and pin cards were introduced fraud migrated fraud came down significantly and then in the last 2 3 years as we were discussing contactless payments have increased and uh, one question that was on top of everybody's mind i remember 3 years ago 3 4 years ago when contactless was introduced more and more cards were being introduced and more pos were being enabled on contactless uh, there there was a lot of concern in uh, certain pockets where people thought it is so easy now for somebody to simply tap as a merchant take and take money out of a customer's uh, customer's wallet or you know simply uh defraud the customer while the card is sitting in the consumer's wallet you know we have seen all those uh, videos right viral videos which went around and the good news that i want to share with uh, the panel today and everybody else is the fact that we currently have zero frauds on nfc contactless believe it or not i want to repeat that word zero frauds have been reported by all the banks in india put together and it's almost 3 and 1/2 4 years of growth uh and uh, we haven't come across anything the only thing that i think the panelists and all the uh, people listening to this uh, to this uh, broadcast would agree is when sometimes when you tap the card and the telecoms or the pos or the hardware etc there is a problem the transaction the contactless transaction doesn't happen the first time and sometimes you tap a second time and uh, uh, sometimes what happens is you realize that it has been tapped twice and it has happened to me uh, a transaction was debited twice to my card that is the only thing that happens and the good news here is uh, we have seen this worldwide and this is a transaction which is called a duplicate transaction which most of the uh, issuers recognize and within no time they drop one of the transaction and keep only one transaction because they can instantly recognize that these transactions happen within a space of few seconds identical from the same merchant two sometimes three transactions also happen they reverse it even before the consumer calls the bank and highlights to them that i got three sms's saying that my card is debited three times so that is the only thing coming to fraud itself absolutely no frauds and uh, it's not just india uh, globally too uh, we haven't seen too much of fraud on uh, contactless transactions because it is not an easy kind of a transaction to clone because the 16 digit card number when you tap or from your mobile or from the uh, smart watch is a tokenized uh, algorithm which goes to the point of sale terminal even if somebody gets hold of that it is not easy they can't make out the 16 digit card number expiry date pin etc so it is uh, near impossible for fraudsters to actually uh, clone a uh, nfc transaction and the other thing i just wanted to make a couple of other points as to why the frauds are less and why would a fraudster go after the entire card the chip and pin card and other opportunities rather than go after a contactless card 
and the contactless transaction is because even if I were to clone as a fraudster a, a contactless card, remember uh, the, the fraudster has to become a merchant, which primarily means he has to open a bank account with all KYC, etc. And when he taps somebody's card without their knowledge and takes the money, the money, there's a trial, right? There's a trial, which primarily means the money has gone from me, Rajiv, to the merchant with so much of details to his bank account. And it's very easy to track uh, any transaction. So no fraudster would want to uh, you know, leave such a trail. And that too for transactions which were you know, limit of 2,000, now it is 5,000. They would want the entire card limit you know, of 50,000 or 100,000 or 2 lakh rupees rather than go after 5,000 rupee transaction because it's painful, it's easy to track and uh, it's not uh, very viable from a fraudster's point of view. That's the reason they don't go after it. Yeah. But there is certainly me, I also would like to allude with what you have been saying with respect to the person with respect to security compromises. But there are some issues with respect to performance, right? Because sometimes transactions get fail, fail, right? So failure of transaction is certainly a problem and probably that requires some investment in the chain of our transaction processing and our budget has try to address that, putting some kind of significant investment into that. So can you can you briefly talk about uh, the performance issues or sometimes failure of transactions had been a, a kind of a, a cause of worry for some time back basically and most of the media stories run around that actually. Yes, Vinayak, uh, you uh, are spot on and um, Rama Madam also alluded to this. Yeah. We do come across uh, transaction failures and that happens because of a bunch of reasons. One, uh, the hardware itself. You know, a lot of banks are deploying the old hardware, they've upgraded it and they deploy it. And usually the way it happens is uh, acquirers give the best and the latest uh, hardware to the biggest merchants where the largest number of transactions are happening and then pass on the old ones, refurbished ones to tier two cities, to smaller merchants who do fewer transactions. And these are not absolutely latest uh, hardware, right? So. Uh, many times the uh, the telecoms on that is uh, a problem and uh, telecom itself as you know today is an example where telecoms don't work the way it is especially when you tap so it's a matter of hardware it is uh, it's a factor of uh, telecoms and sometimes the availability of network itself the network between the point of sale terminal and the acquirer sometimes the network is not good or sometimes the network is so loaded with transactions that it is taking time for the transaction to be recognized and for the transaction to complete. And I see this happening. Uh, and, and when we go around and see the transaction efficacy, as we say, you'll see some of these latest uh, Android terminals, which are so fantastic. Even before you actually take the card close to the point of sale terminal, it recognizes almost five, seven, uh, five to 10 centimeters away from the point of sale terminal. It recognizes the transaction goes through, whether it's a mobile card, or a watch, but it's not the same when you see an old terminal. Uh, you will have to touch the terminal on the back, on the top. You know, we have seen all kinds of problems, right? So that is a factor of hardware, telecoms, connectivity, uh, which I believe is going to improve as the transactions increase, uh, acquirers will be forced uh, and pay, uh, payment facilitators will be forced to upgrade the hardware because uh, merchant will complain, consumers will complain. And there are a lot of customers who are trying to do contactless transactions. If they don't go through, merchant will lose uh, business. So I expect uh, the upgradation of hardware, telecoms, and the networks to keep improving so that more and more contactless transactions will be successful. Yeah. Um, and, and I think uh, this all uh, ecosystem is taking us, and there are a lot of interventions which are happening at a national level as well to really make this happen for that matter. Um, we just tried to, in the report, we tried to depict the scenarios for the future, right? The current state in terms of uh, how the contactless ecosystem is happening with respect to the transport ecosystem. For the, so the, there are some cities like Noida, Kochi, Delhi um, had uh, come up with the cars which can be used over the uh, transportation network basically. And there are, um, there are some uh, bus ecosystem, uh, bus bus uh, ticketing system also now can can go on a contactless uh, payment ecosystem and we are seeing that transition happening in at least some cities basically and these are pilot cities and Minister of uh, Urban uh, Development had been really aggressively following this agenda. So this is one 
area that we see second area is certainly the um, the all these fast tag uh, we all have been using for you know, from traveling from one country city to other city basically and all the tolls are now increasingly and more, most likely by by january they uh, every every travel from that toll would become a, a, a compulsory on this NETC uh, mechanisms, so national uh, electronic toll collection mechanism, which we all know in FASTAC ecosystem. And now currently, suppose we have um, uh, 1.8 million uh, FASTAC uh, uh, issued, so, so many millions of FASTAC will get, in, uh, get the basically issued. And I think uh, uh, it will uh, the number of transaction will grow to 15.5 billion dollar 5, 5 billion by 2025 basically and same is same is happening with the local hyper as as uh, uh, Ravi talked uh, in his uh, initial demand basically so local hyper uh, the commerce ecosystem is also evolving and i'm in a small city now small hometown and every transaction i'm doing in a very remote class uh, part of the country as well is now increasingly contact the uh, uh, ecosystem basically dr janki raman uh, so from from what we see in the millions to the transaction going to the billions basically so for example there are 70 million bus trips happening in the in the country at this as of now basically and they will become 300 million by uh, 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 by 2030 and most of that will be on probably uh, uh, contact this uh, transaction ecosystem so billions of transaction will only come from the people traveling in bus basically so the value and velocity of a transaction will significantly die basically so uh, so when you look at, at the aggregate level, how the contactless ecosystem is evolving, so how do you see what would be the key contributing from the technology side, the ecosystem perspective, from the standard perspective? So what do you think that uh, from ideability perspective, so things that will be evolving uh, and what will be the key contributing catalyst force for this transition? Yeah, so sure, Vinayak. I think you know one of the key things that we are uh, we are seeing now is the uh, exponential growth of the transactions, digital transactions that are taking place, you know. Now, when there's an exponential growth in the digital transactions, and then you know, all these transactions somewhere have to get you know, uh, translated into the banking transactions, because at some level they get you know, into the uh, you know, connected uh, you know, UPI addresses or whatever you see as a credit card or whatever lower level you know, uh, actual accounts that needs to be having the transfers. Right? Now, the key question is, for example, if a bank actually wants to handle these transactions and then they take it to their core banking system, then suddenly, if there is a spurt, we, we can never predict no. how these volumes and velocities of these transactions. And they start hitting their core banking at some point of time. And then all these are in internal infrastructure. Then you can't scale them and up and down as you like. And then that's going to be a very, very key thing in terms of redesigning these banking systems. You know? Now, one of the key things IDRBT is looking at it is now is to actually from core banking to cloud banking because you can auto scale uh, no you are all infrastructure very easily only if you take it to the cloud uh, rather than keep it you uh, know on prem infrastructure because on prem infrastructure you can never provision it for the peak loads it doesn't make sense and now as these transactions for example you, you rightly pointed out, for example, the bus traffic and then you know related transactions coming in. They are seasonal and there are peaks and you know valleys for these transactions. So as these things happen, you suddenly new, now need to move from a core banking to the cloud banking. Otherwise, you will not be able to handle it. And if transactions start failing, you know, at some point of time because of the loads, everybody will become upset that, you know, these transactions are not going through. And then, you know, as the load starts surging in, more will fail because, you know, you, your infrastructure will start failing because at the end, these all have to be, you know, uh, you know processed on your infrastructure, right? So suddenly there, there is going to be a rethink and then, you know, suddenly there's going to be a redesign of these whole things. The minute you try to take it to the cloud, you have additional issues. For example, security issues actually multiply for you when you actually move into the cloud. You know, that's where 
probably you need to think of new models like confidential computing and other you know enclaves where you start processing your data so all financial systems when they move into the cloud now probably need a rethink on what they're going to do what kind of stuff they're going to handle there and then what kind of stuff they're going to handle as part of the hybrid cloud infrastructure you know one of the major things you know suddenly this is this is going to be something that you will witness you know as the exponential growth of the digital transactions are going to happen now it's already started hitting some major banks now if you look at it you know uh, and they're getting penalized and then you know some banks have been asked by RBI not to you know you know further give cards because you know their infrastructure is not able to handle it and no. the outing timings are, are more now you know when that quality of service comes in and then you know the regulator starts seeing that they are not able to handle it we will say you know you, you can no longer expand things you know and that's where basically i think the whole infrastructure needs a different kind of a thinking and suddenly ideability is now looking at um, three components one is the 5g component we are also have a 5g use yeah. case lab where basically the edge clouds come into picture and the backend clouds come into picture and you can have a financial network slice which handles things completely differently from you know uh, you know whatever is happening currently so we are trying to actually put in something called the national digital financial infrastructure nadi we are terming it you know which takes the 5g infrastructure and creates a network slice handles it in a secured way when we when we move these digital transactions through various points you know where it can be handled the best thing is to handle it as close where it gets generated so that yeah. the network bandwidth is saved and then the processing can be done efficiently so that's the kind of infrastructure we feel uh, suddenly will be needed going forward because you know the we are seeing an exponential growth of these digital transactions you know and would we so in in 5g we talk about uh, disaggregation right and we talk about mm -hmm. more moving to edge computing so in, in banking we largely talk about core banking getting every transaction process centrally basically so mm -hmm. probably now uh, core banking would also now uh, we evolve to more disaggregated uh, way of transaction processing right sure i think that's going to be a major thing that you start seeing and one nice thing is you can create a dedicated network slice with the 5g infrastructure yeah, yeah. which means that you can actually uh, no put the service function chainings which can work some parts can work on the edge cloud some parts can work with your you know back end cloud so the whole thing can seamlessly work and the and you can either scale it at the edge level or at the back end level depending on where the bottlenecks are surfacing for you you know so in that sense the network bottlenecks plus the computing bottlenecks can be easily handled you know when we get into this 5g infrastructure in my opinion you know right that's something that we are looking at as part of our 5g use case lab so anil ji so until now when we talk about cloud right in banking context we always talked about very peripheral application not a very core central application going to cloud but now because of this volume and velocity and diversity and now a lot of complexity as well and so many players coming in there is no way uh, for us to now um, inhibit ourselves to not to go for the cloud on a very core banking as well so uh, so so i i know cloud is evolving uh, as dr jankar was talking about this secure computing there lot of lot, lot, lot of work which is happening in that area so do you see that uh see so paternity in the banking industry because industry is not preparing their mind to more core application as well on the cloud yes and that is a cause of worry so the bank initially the bank was slightly and uh, from the information security department we were slightly hesitant in putting the core applications into cloud and our the our pi and sensitive data on the cloud and much of the resistance was coming from the the security departments but then they, again like uh, dr jankar will pointed out this is inevitable it has to happen you know we starting with the what we did with the video kyc and now these kind of things with this spurt in transaction your core cannot be able to handle this so bank is working on two fronts we are now into the cbs 2.0 where we are looking at the kind of you know 
coming out to the newer version of core and like fashionably they speak about hollowing the core and all of the stuff so that is happening and then we are doing the capacity planning and the redundancy planning for the on prem infrastructure at the same time we are also enabled ourselves to go to the cloud in a hybrid manner starting off with the lesser critical and the low criticality applications and as you'll be aware we are running one of the largest private cloud in the country uh, it's called the megdoot so we have another largest private cloud we have adequate capacities but with the kind of you know the the vision which you laid out and we also envision this kind of uh, exponential increase in the volumes and we we are working on certain things you know where where the idea would be to the the burstable portion of things goes to the cloud so when i when my on prem reaches a certain kind of uh, 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 core mass then things burst out into the cloud so that is the kind of thing which we are looking at we have enabled ourselves and right now as we speak you know we have done a, we have done a cloud strategy we have done a cloud policy where we are we are assessing what are the kind of controls which we need to have on the cloud which we are looking at the regulators worldwide uh, and what our regulator also says about the cloud what the meti says about the cloud and recently you would have seen that the monetary authority of singapore has come out with the with the very comprehensive document on the cloud security i think it was first of may or first of june we are taking cues from them we are building the strategies and the policies to take on cloud so it was very rightly pointed out by dr janki raman this kind of things have to happen the the on prem infrastructure can only take that certain amount of load so we have to provision for a higher on prem capacities at the same time you know that itself is not adequate we need to be enabled ourselves for the cloud and that all of that is happening in state bank of india i can assure you that whatever the 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 scenario which you pictureize pictureize for us that happens we'll all be ready for it and and i think raju uh, means we we try to depict this picture right so what is going to happen in the coming future and how we are as a industry technology providers and plus consumers also getting ready for this one consumers largely because of the pandemic that we had seen but now because of the pandemic many more digitization stories will become important because all that are getting accelerated basically so how do you see uh, somebody uh, who has been providing these services uh, card payment transaction services to the different global geographies uh, as of now how do you see the future that you as a mastercard seeing uh, in the contactless payment ecosystem and overall transaction processing industry the way it is today uh, thanks vinayak um, you know uh, if you just wind the clock back to 3 years just 3 years not very long ago contactless transactions were less than 1% of all the transaction card transaction less than 1% in fact it is we around 0.2% while we had invested both on the cards with our partners and on the acquiring ecosystem we had millions of uh, millions of point of sale machines ready to take uh, you know contactless transactions and there are millions of cards uh, the pick up was slow till 3 years ago and then it started going up but covid has really accelerated uh the contactless payments and uh, as uh, we speak it is around 15% as of now which primarily means 15% of all card based transactions are contactless 85% is still contact but it is increasing and it is accelerating um we believe by end of this year if the trend continues and there is no third wave and total lockdown we believe we will be around uh, 20% by end of this year and once the contactless volumes touches around 25% it's another inflection point you know we've got based on our global uh, research studies and behavior of markets we have seen there are um, multiple inflection points one uh, below 10 around 10% when it happens it takes off goes to 25% and then once it touches 25% it takes off process 50% so we are eagerly looking forward to touching uh, 25% so that after that it assumes a life of its own and we will cross that 50 60 70% which is what we are seeing in markets like a singapore uh, australia for instance australia is 98% contactless only 2% of the transactions is contact new zealand is also in the same zone so we are hoping india uh, is still one of the fastest growing contactless markets uh, we are looking at 20% this year very soon 50% and after that inflection point we want to see a 70 80% contactless market in india 
Yeah, and, and, and to just make that happen, I think this report talks about um, uh, 10 to 11 different ideas uh, and uh, as a recommendation, basically. One is the design, uh, which can be guarantee contactless, other could be uh, investment in infrastructure and network, interoperability standards, open framework, uh, uh, innovation that is required, and more importantly, the enabling local financial ecosystem, then security research, then modern cryptography and overall security awareness campaign that is required for the uh, end user. So these are some of the 8, 10, 11 points Dr. Jankiraman we talked about as a recommendation in this report basically. So if you have to really uh, put your recommendation forward from uh, IDIBT, so, how, so what could be those ideas, those words uh, that you would be using to make this transition happen? With this, we can conclude the today's sessions as well. With your yeah, I think you know one thing is, uh, uh, in my opinion, um, the acceptance, you uh, know, which was a critical thing by the you know by the end user, seems to have a phenomenal jump that has come in because of COVID. You know that way, COVID is a blessing, you know, uh, in, in disguise for some of these technologies because. What, what would have taken several years for adoption has really happened last, you know, uh, last one year during COVID, you know. And contactless digital transactions is one such thing which saw a big boost as far as I could see, you know. Uh, now, in terms of making it uh, going forward, in making this, you know, a uh, little more uh, you know, rapid adoption, one of the things I, I see is important is uh, uh, the user experience. You know, that's going to be very critical going forward, you know, right? Now, uh, if the user starts experiencing either security problems or, you know, the uh, uh, transaction failures, as you rightly pointed out, then they will start having difficulty and they will start looking at other alternatives. So. One of the key things going forward to take this to the next level, in my opinion, is uh, the design has to as a first thing, you know, into the design, which means that the design first principles have to change from the technology perspective, right? And uh, I think, uh, as I see it, uh, card transactions, of course, uh, I could be wrong because I'm not really an expert on that particular thing. I should admit that. But if you look at it uh, in terms of, um, you know, card transactions, we might see a decline and then we might see more, you know, mobile uh, powered transactions going forward, you know. If that is the case, I think we are already seeing the QR based, uh, you know, in fact, IDRPT states the committee for both Bharat QR and the UPI QR, both committees, uh, the steering committee is, is, is part of IDRBT, is a coordinator for both the steering committees. If you look at the QR code enabled processes, they are already contactless in my opinion, you know. And yeah. going forward, that's going to be the way things are going to move much faster. And I think we, we, should, uh, we should have more traction in that space, in my, is, is my opinion, you know. Because the merchants, if you look at the number of QR codes out there, is phenomenal. And I think uh, people are talking about, you know, 60 million QR codes there, out there. And then, you know, people just using it to pay all kinds of things, you know, even 10 rupees, 20 rupees. If you see the advertisements, a simple Nariel, you know, uh, t taking advertisement where the person just, uh, you know, runs and then. Uh, so I think. Uh, I think we should choose the right technologies, in my opinion, for the traction. And I know from that point of view, I see card transactions, at least for me, don't figure in that path, you know, because people are going to move into, you know, other channels much faster and easier than the card based uh, transactions, you know. So, you know, given that, uh, you know, of course, you know, probably Raju might differ with me, you know, uh, you know obviously, you know, with. Uh, you know, uh, be, being the you know, person who is uh, you know, from the MasterCard side, but I, my my belief is that going forward, I think the wallets, the the, the wallet-based transactions, and then you know the mobile-based transactions, certainly we should focus on that and see how to make them more secure and give better user experience for the you know 
the people. And especially I, I, I believe now with the CBDC, Central Bank Digital Currency, which yeah. the RBI Deputy Governor actually spoke about it and Governor also spoke about it, I think provides uh, suddenly a path with these e-wallets. I think we are going to see a completely a different ecosystem developing when that uh, gets into place. In my opinion, that's where the most of the traction is going to come in, uh, as far as uh, I, I can I can see. You know, right. Yeah, man. Th those are very important thought-provoking thing, and and we all are experiencing in our day-to-day -day life as well, basically. So, Rajiv, uh, uh, yeah. Now, now you you are done to respond on that. <laughs> yeah, I I completely agree with uh, Mr. Janaki Ram. Um, Card-based uh, uh, contactless transactions, uh, because of uh, the way the market was, uh, the way it evolved uh, worldwide. That's how it starts. It starts with the card-based. Uh, contactless transaction, then it quickly moves to mobile-based transactions. And uh, with SBI, we are working on a watch, uh, smart watch-based transactions. These are uh, same cards, but tokenized and embedded into a mobile and a smart watch. And this is how it is going to pan out as the contactless transactions uh, will increase. More and more banks will allow customers to use their uh, NFC-enabled mobile phones and uh, NFC-enabled uh, devices, whether it is a keychain or a key fob or a smartwatch to embed their tokenized cards and start paying so that you don't have to carry your wallet or a card at all. So I completely agree with you, sir, on that one. And that's how uh, we expect the market to uh, you know, uh, evolve uh, over the years. And uh, Vinayak, if I may uh, close um, with one very interesting anecdote, which is contactless in India, uh, which I'm sure everybody is going to like. You know, worldwide, um, Contactless tap and go, near field communication, pay pass, pay wave, like this, we've got so many names for contactless transactions. Most of them, as you see, are longish, right? Contactless and tap and go, NFC, when you expand, is very long. The beauty about India, uh, which we have seen in the last three, four years, India calls contactless transactions Wi Fi payments. Thanks to the ubiquitous the Wi-Fi logo that's on the cards and the point of sale machines, they have shortened it to Wi-Fi. And the beauty about uh, this, uh, based on my observation in the last one, one and a half years is, even this is going to go away and it is going to be a sign language to make a contactless payment. And I'm already testing this very, very successfully. I'm sure some of you have done. Nowadays, when I go to some of these merchants, when the payment uh, time comes, uh, I don't say contactless, I don't say Wi-Fi, I don't say anything. I take out my card and I just do this. Two ways. Yeah. Nine out of the ten merchants recognize that I want to do a Wi-Fi transaction or a contactless transaction and initiate the transaction. No words exchange, no talk, nothing. And uh, in uh, tier two, uh, tier one and two cities like Bangalore, Mumbai, I have seen the next level where when you give a card, you know, till one and a half years ago, when you give a card, it was muzzle memory where they would stick the card into the point of sale machine, put the amount and give the POS machine for you to put a, a pin, right? Now, most of these merchants are so smart. Moment you give a card, they recognize this is a Wi-Fi card or a contactless card and initiate the transaction, tap and give it back in a split second because they want to transact more. They want to give a fantastic UX to customers. So the behavior of both the merchants and consumers is changing. And uh, so it's Wi-Fi payments for India and hopefully sign language and just show the card and wave it and a transaction will go through in India very soon. Yeah. And I think that, that is certainly I myself is personally experiencing and I'm sure that the sign language for contactless would would become a norm uh, uh, going forward. So, but with this, I in the interest of time, I definitely need to conclude this session. But thank you, Rajiv. Thank you, Mr. Anand. And th thank you, Dr. John Kiraman for joining us. And uh, I think we touch upon a, a small element of this discussion to the to the to significant larger lake up of this discussion basically uh, how this will entirely impacting the overall core banking ecosystem that we see from now and i think uh, all that is happening with a with a kind of a volume and velocity coming from the transaction basically so 
until now it was more provider driven yeah. kind of digitization but now it's a user driven digitization that we will see because of the experience and uh, the kind of convenience that we have been looking from the user side basically and i'm sure ki we will get many more opportunity to discuss about this topic in coming future because this topic will be very significantly dominant in coming 10 years of time basically and thank you for joining us today and for contributing to all the dimensions of the discussion thank you thank you sir thank you Thank, thank you Vinay thank you Vinay and thank you thank you Mr Anil thank, thank you Mr Janaka thank you thank you thank you thank you Dr Chandra thank you Mr Rajiv thank you thank you thank you, thank you all yeah. well they say that act as if you do make a difference because it does well, the covid-19 adversity has provided us with an opportunity to ramp up the digital payment infrastructure to not only suit the present but i would also say to become future ready vinaya thank you very much for managing the contours of an inclusive discussion right out there and panelists thank you very much for bringing those dialogues we could further see the light at the end of this sort of pandemic tunnel thank you very much for joining us and on that note ladies and gentlemen dearest audience members we will humbly hold you back for a closing no- uh, closing note right there so please be there we'll be right back all right so with this we as we come to the end of this report launch the contactless payments making it safe secure and easy for a billion indians we would like to request mr vinay godse once again to join us back on the stage for the closing remarks and the note there thank you shika and thank you all uh, joining us today to all the participants of this particular session and so this report that been um, Uh, capturing like a very interesting journey like what exactly had happened until now in the context of payment ecosystem right from talking about very minor minor micro level uh, uh, evolutions which are happening to to really contribute to the context of payment ecosystem to the larger uh, micro level aspects which have been driving this entire uh, evolutions of a contact uh, uh less payment ecosystem basically it dwells into the very technology side of the story and also it talks about the larger policy larger uh, national initiatives that are going to fuel this particular gen, uh, evolution that we will be seeing uh, we are seeing and we will be seeing quite significantly in coming 10 years of time basically so thank you for joining us please feel free to uh, click this link which has been shared uh, read this report this report is not only the report which you can read it one time the lot of those um, blogs are there image blogs are there you can use and refer it for various of interaction that you will be doing we have some uh, recommendations given to make this particular journey quite significantly uh, impactful in coming time of time so please feel free to uh, connect us or uh, Uh, provide the, your input on them basically so so that uh, we when we are tracking this particular journey we will be mindful of the recommendations and input given by you basically so uh, and and for putting this report together i really thank mastercard team not only for the support they have been providing us but also quite a intense level of discussion that we had with them in a in a during the time of this report uh, development basically and uh, it's it's uh, uh, so many reports that we referred and so many people in mastercard we interacted and uh, so that really helped us to understand this ecosystem from the providers perspective basically and we during the course we also interacted with some of the ceos and uh, some of those uh, industry people and we really thankful for their input and in uh, and uh, insights as well and um, uh, more importantly uh, all this has been facilitated by the fti consulting uh, uh, team and they had been instrumental and in driving force or catalyst force for us to really you know, put ourselves um into into the position to unlearn many thing that we know about this and probably apply our fresh learning uh, uh to this entire uh, elements that we looked at as a part of this contact payment ecosystem and thank you the fti team for the support and in the sa team um, my colleague aditya anand raman and uh, uh amit ghosh uh, who had been with us for the developing this report as a as a final outcome basically so they had been continuously with with us uh, and supporting me and uh, rama out towards this report and thank you for all this contribution once again i i really thank the audience coming and joining us here and we would look forward to see you uh, with at another 
area that we will be exploring and probably interacting with you on that particular thing so thank you uh, 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 the audience here so thank you over to you jatin all right so vinayak first to thank you very much for your collaborative closing note and of course with that vibe of gratitude and so on that note on behalf of dsci and mastercard i would like to thank all our dear delegates the dignitaries and the speakers alike for gifting your time for this unmissable report launch hope you all had a good time listening to some of the knowledgeable discussions out there well also i'm hoping that you've got your copy of the report already and you've downloaded it in case if missed there's no worry because you can still download your copy of the report that's contactless payments making it safe secure and easy for a billion indians through the link provided in the chat window on this experiential platform for now i would like to say thank you so much to all of you have a happy heart set health set and mindset thank you